welcome to BanjoBenClark.com. This is your home for instructional materials, videos, and tabs when it comes to learning guitar, banjo, and mandolin. Today we are continuing on our study, our video study into how to play bluegrass rhythm guitar. And this really applies to many more genres than just bluegrass because we're really delving into our right hand mechanics as well as our left hand, what's going on, and putting those two together. Now, if you haven't watched part one and two of this series, I invite you uh, as a Gold Pick member at my site, BanjoBenClark.com, to go check those out. You can uh, click on the guitar videos section, as you see here. Bling! And uh, that will show you part one and two. Today we're going to cover part three, and I'm recording part four, and this is going to be a long series all the way up to a uh, very advanced bluegrass rhythm guitar. So far in part one, we covered um, the three chords that we're mainly going to be concentrating on at first, and that is the G, C, and D chord. A lot of our songs in bluegrass are played out of a G position, so these are the three most common chords that we're going to be playing. Of course, in the future, we're going to go into all sorts of other chords and keys, but we talked about the best positions to use for those chords. We talked about our alternating bass patterns. We've talked about um, our measures and what those parts of a measures are. And also, when we play guitar rhythm, what is our role? We have our bass that we are playing, and we also have our treble that we're playing. So how do we put those two together? And so today we're gonna to dive a little bit more deeply into that. I wanna take you through a little bit of the theory of what's going on, and then we'll take our uh, exercise that we've already learned how to play in part two, and we're going to be building on that, making it more and more advanced, making you sound more and more like a rhythm maestro. So I'm glad you're here today. Let's dive in. Now in parts one and two, we learned the most basic stripped down bluegrass rhythm that you can possibly learn. It dealt with just quarter notes. It dealt with all downstrokes. And essentially it was a bass strum, bass strum type of rhythm. Um, many people play it and that's good. We're gonna go on from that. We learned that in our G chord and our C chord and in our D chord. I'd like to Theory-wise, I'd like to draw that out for you, exactly what's going on on the counting side of things. Because if you don't understand really um, how that looks, what we're playing, how it looks on paper, then it's going to be tougher for you to understand exactly what's going on whenever we make it more advanced, which is the way that we're heading. Now, let's take a look at the whiteboard here. And I first want to draw out for you what we've been doing in parts one and two and how we're going to go on from there. Now here I have a, uh, two essentially blocks of measures, two measures, and we're dealing in 4-4 four, four time. Uh, in most songs, most commercial music, we're dealing with 4-4 four, four time. 4-4 four, four time simply means that there are four beats per measure. That's for the top four there. And the bottom four means that a quarter note receives one beat. That's telling us what the worth of a quarter note is. A quarter note now gets one beat. Now what does a quarter note look like? You see a lot of musicians, classical musicians, jazz musicians, deal in what's called standard notation, which is the notes that you would see in your hymnal or as you're growing up singing in choir. Um, and generally in bluegrass and in commercial music we don't deal with standard notation we deal with a tab a tablature and so we borrow certain things from standard notation and uh, and adapt it to our tab it's very very easy to go back and forth between the two today we're going to use uh, simply an x to represent a note and the thing that we are going to borrow from our standard notation are the stems, you see, because it's the stems that tell us how much each note is worth. In standard notation, a quarter note would look like this. It would be a circle, it would be filled in solid, and it would have a straight stem going either up or down. It really doesn't matter. In tab, we would have um, a fret note, a fret, to represent the note. So if we wanted to play the third fret on an E string, we would draw a three there. But in order to let us know that it is a quarter note, we'll still 
draw a stem going either up or we can draw it down. That tells me that I want a quarter note on the third fret of whatever string I have it drawn on. Right now, we're just going to talk in terms of X because we're not talking about any particular strings or any particular notes. We're simply talking about rhythm. So if I want just one beat here, I'm going to just draw a line down to it. That is a quarter notes worth of time. Now we know that that receives one beat. So if we wanted a whole measure of that, which has four beats, how many X's would we have? Well, here's a measure right here, and let's draw that out to what it would look like. One, two, three, four. And those are quarter notes, so we draw our line down from them. And that's essentially what we were playing in parts one and two. Bass, strum, bass, strum. And that's very, very basic. However, we want to move on from there because each one of these quarter notes can be divided down into subunits, okay? And those subunits have names as well. Music is very mathematical, which is why I think I like it. I love math. Now, does anyone out there, you math nerds, know what a quarter note divided by two is? What would that be? A quarter note times a half is essentially what we want. What is that? That would be one eighth. Half of a quarter is one eighth. Now, how would we denote that in our standard notation? Well, it's very, very easy. Get my eraser. They denote it by adding a stem, a flag rather, to the stem. So a single eighth note would look like that. Whenever they want to put two eighth notes together, They'll put two just like this. Both will have a stem, and they tie the flags together. I'm sure that many of you have seen that. Now, if we want to do that in tab, we simply um, take these notes. If we want to write, say, a second fret, we would draw twos. We would have stems and tie those stems together. So in the same way, we're going to do X's today. If we want one half of a beat, which is an eighth note, two X's tied together, just like that. So now what we can do is look at our standard measure that we have right now with our basic rhythm that we've been playing. We've been playing simply four quarter notes, bass, strum, bass, strum. Let's look at that and decide where perhaps we can make this a little more advanced, perhaps a little more full. And there's an uh, a place in that measure that we're going to start. And essentially what we're going to do is take one of these X's, one of these quarter note X's, and substitute it out for two eighth note X's, which has the same amount of time. If we're counting along, one, two, three, four. Okay, now we are going to essentially look at the next measure in a subunit. One, and two, and three, and four. And the speed of the song does not change. It's just that we're adding subdivisions to those major, the beats that we have, those four beats that we have. What I'd like to introduce to you is that we're going to keep a quarter note on the first beat. And I'm going to play this for you here in a little while. It's going to make, it's going to tie it all together. We're going to keep that there. But for the second beat, I would like to, for us to introduce two eighth notes. Look just like this. On the third beat, which is that bass note, we're going to keep it as a quarter note. But for the fourth beat, that strum, we're going to turn it in to two eighth notes. Now, let's pick up the guitar. Let's look at the difference in these, and you'll see how it's going to begin to bring new dimension to your rhythm and uh, make it a lot more fun to play. Oh! Uh -huh. 